Hey guys, welcome to Living It Up Raw. And in this episode, as so many of you have been pestering us, we finally have our hands on the all new Suzuki V Strom SX250. And as the name suggests, this borrows heavily from Suzuki's established 250cc platform in the Jigsaw and the SX250. So the engine, the 249cc oil cool mill is exactly the same, makes the same 26.5 PS of power, 22.2 Nm of torque, even the 6 speed transmission is exactly the same. So are the internal gear ratios as well as the final drive. And also in terms of the other components, whether it's the suspension, whether it's the brakes, whether it's the headlight, they're all borrowed from the Jigsa, while the tail light is borrowed from the old Jigsa. So what is different you ask? Well the biggest change is of course the 19 inch front wheel which has increased the ground clearance to a colossal 205mm which in turn has increased the seat height by 35mm to 835 You also have a longer swing arm for better stability which along with the offset front wheel has increased the wheelbase by 100mm on the chassis front, you have an all-new subframe which now houses the aluminium uh, top box rack which will come handy when you go touring. And all of these changes are now wrapped around this beautiful bodywork which looks stunning in yellow. And I especially love how Suzuki have managed to incorporate the existing Jigsa uh, headlight assembly into the signature beak which we have seen for so long on the v 1000 as well as the v 650. You also have upright handlebar and even the foot pegs are a little more front set for more relaxed ergonomics. And at the front, you also get a non-adjustable windscreen. And even the instrument cluster has been updated with Bluetooth connectivity which intimates you of incoming calls, messages and also features turn-by-turn -turn navigation. But as we are late to the party, I have a feeling that you already knew about all of these specs and changes. So why don't we hit the road and see what the V-Strom SX250 can do. Here we go. So this is the part that I love so much about this engine. It's so engaging. It loves to be flogged. And it really packs a punch when you get it spinning. So that's why on the Jigsaw, even when you're in the city slicing through traffic or you're up in the mountains on the SF chasing corners, it makes for a very involving experience. But here, yeah, on the V-Strom, the focus is of course completely different. This is more about cruising. And yeah, I can already see two big problems with that. The first one being that this engine loves to rev. It doesn't really have a very strong mid-range. It only about wakes up around 4,000 RPM, really gets going around 6,000 RPM. So below that, there's not much poke for those quick overtakes, which means you will have to shift down a fair bit when you're on the highway. Which brings us to the second point. You don't mind the shifting because the gearbox is nice and slick. But if you're going to be riding in the lower gears, what you'll also experience are the vibrations on the pegs. They get quite buzzy from 6000 RPM. And even when we are switching gears and going in the higher gears, yeah, I can still feel them. In fact, the only time I could feel the peg settle down a little bit was on the highway in the sixth gear, but I was almost very close to its rev limit. But I'm not sure how many roads you will find in India where you can keep the throttle pin for that long to stay in that rev band. So essentially, you are looking at a cruising speed of only about 100 kilometers an hour, where you can cruise comfortably before the pegs start going abuzz. Which is a shame because, of course, the engine is capable of going so much faster 
which also means that you're going to be spending a lot more time in the saddle but that brings us to the good part because this is not a bad place to be at all the upright handlebar the front set pegs mean that uh, you are sitting in a nice and relaxed position there's a lot of room to move around even the seats seem to be well padded for munching big miles for the rider as well as the pillion also when i was exiting the city i was impressed with the heat management as i was on the sf the oil cooler really helps keep uh, the engine temperature in check the mirrors offer you a good view of what's happening behind you even the windscreen does a pretty good job of uh, protecting you from the wind and the wind blast about to about 120 kilometers an hour thereafter you can feel a little bit of buffeting on the helmet up to 120 there's no problem and also in terms of the ride quality I feel the front is especially is a little bit softer compared to the SF which obviously helps make the ride quality a little bit plusher but then what you're losing out on is what I've always loved about the Jigsaw and the Jigsaw SF which is the solid front and feel so now with the 19 inch front and the softer front in terms of the suspension setup you cannot carry as much speed as you can on the Jigsaw because you're not as well connected even though you have a lot more cornering clearance at your disposal and also when it comes to braking yeah, yeah the, I don't think you can brake as hard as you can on the Jigsaw because you don't have the same amount of feedback and confidence when you're braking really hard It would be fair to assume that Suzuki did this to extend the capability of the SX250 when you go off-road as well. I mean, if you look at the 19-inch front, look at the colossal 205 mm of ground clearance that you have at your disposal, you have dual-purpose tires, you have knuckle guards, it does look promising. But then, when you take into account the suspension travel, it's exactly the same as the Jigsaw 250. And the fact that you don't have the option to switch off the rear ABS it's a telltale sign that the SX250 wasn't really meant to go off-road a little bit of soft roading is fine but even for that when you're standing up and riding the ergonomics aren't really the best for going proper off-roading but that I can still live with I think the single biggest hurdle in the success of this motorcycle is going to be its 2.11 lakh rupee price tag that's 32,000 rupees more than the Jigsaw 250 now I was just at the KTM RC390 launch and even that bike I was finding it difficult to justify its 36,000 rupee price hike even though it gets lean sensitive ABS traction control you get quick shifter auto blipper and a TFT screen this bike on the other hand for its 32,000 rupee premium is not even offering you a slipper clutch all you're getting is Bluetooth connectivity you're getting a USB charger and new body work which actually adds 11 kgs to the weight makes it 100 mm longer and 35 mm taller without significantly boosting its touring ability now don't get me wrong it is definitely more comfortable and I really like the way it looks but if it were my hard-earned money I would instead just go for the Jigsaw 250 even if I wanted to go touring because it still offers you upright ergonomics pretty comfortable seats you have the same 320 odd kilometer range from the 12 liter tank even the cruising speed is similar even though you don't get a windscreen and it's also a lot more fun in corners